Good evening, everyone, and it's a great joy to see you all, and a great joy to be back in church together, virtually and physically, and of course to be here together to license Simon. For those I haven't met so far, I'm Josie, Josie Goodwin, I'm one of the assistant area deans, and it's been my great pleasure to travel through the vacancy with those of you here at Christchurch, and I'm acting as area dean this evening. This being the Church of England, of course, nothing has changed during the pandemic and there are notices. For many of you, I know this is your home church, but for, the, for those of us who are guests, should we need to evacuate the building, we're not expecting to, but should we need to evacuate the building, the quickest route out is the way you came in, to the back of church and to the left. If for some reason we can't get out there, we can get out to the right, and if for some reason we need to come forward, then we can get out through the door straight across there and to the left and out into the courtyard. And wherever we exit the building, we gather again on the forecourt where we came in. A reminder, please, just to check your mobiles and your other devices and make sure that um, they're on silent or switched off. And the loos, should you need them, are in the parish centre. So if you head to the back of church, and I'm sure some will direct you in the right direction. Things are a bit different, aren't they, this evening for our return to church. So thank you so much for paying attention to the guidelines that we sent out beforehand about the current situation. And I'm sure that you will have read those and absorbed them. And there's clear guidance to in the order of service. But because this is very new for all of us, um, before we begin, um, can I remind you of the most important points to bear in mind? Unless you have a specific role in the service and have been briefed beforehand, Please stay in your place throughout, unless you're asked to move by a steward or somebody else. And it goes against the grain in a service like this, but we really want to show our support for Simon. But please remember to speak all responses gently rather than boldly to avoid any potential risk of droplet spread. God knows the boldness of our hearts, despite the gentleness of our voices, Simon. When it comes to the peace, we remain in our seats and indicate our greeting to one another um, without contact and silently. So however you feel most comfortable, a bow, a nod, a wave, a smile, um, whatever feels right to you. At the end of the service, the action will be at the back of church and Simon and those of us with him will leave through the open door. If you would kindly remain quietly in your places until directed to leave by a steward, and then once outside the building, we're free. We can talk to each other, we can greet each other. And as long as we stay physically distanced, of course, and there will be the chance for some physically distanced photos too. And we'd be really grateful if you would take your order of service booklet with you when you leave. And finally, I sincerely hope and pray that we all stay healthy in the coming weeks, but please note the request on the back of the order of service. And if you do test positive for coronavirus within three weeks of this service, please email us so that we can undertake the necessary track and trace activity to contain the spread of the virus to anyone beyond ourselves. So thank you for absorbing all of that, and after the joy of the notices, a moment of quiet before we begin. Would you stand? The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you. And also with you. Now, having made you all stand up, I'm going to ask you to sit down again. <laughs> to add my words of welcome to those of Josie, uh, it is immensely good to be here tonight. It's good, isn't it, to be back in church, and it's good in this blended way to be joining those who are watching through a live stream. It is uh, immensely good that we are together, uh, and indeed those who will watch this service uh, at a later time. We come giving thanks for God's goodness 
These have been extraordinary, challenging weeks that we have been through with our church buildings closed. But of course, as has been said so many times before, while our buildings may have been closed, the church has been alive and active and at work, sharing the good news of the love of God in Jesus Christ in so many ways, through pastoral care, through practical care, through the building up of community, through reaching out to others. And we come confident, confident in God's love and care for us and in that call which is ours as a church to which we uh, renew our commission today. So much has been done and I want to say thank you. Thank you to everyone here at Christ Church, those in the building, those watching from elsewhere. Thank you for all that you have done over this time to ensure that the church has been alive and active and that witness has continued. Thank you to uh, the wardens uh, and to all who have worked together to make this service. Josie, thank you to you uh, for your part in this. Thank you for being the church here and Simon, Simon and Jill, thank you. Thank you for making the move to be here. And Ben and Katie and it's uh, Christopher and Megan, is that right, who are on their way, but not quite here yet. And I'm not going to tell them what you said before the service. It's quite all right. <laughs> well, not for a small fee anyway. <laughs> it, is, it is immensely good. We've been waiting for this for a long time. I know you've been waiting to come. And we are so pleased to welcome you here. Uh, to Cheltenham, I know to the parish here and to the Diocese of Gloucester. Um, I've done that move from Chelsea Diocese to Gloucester Diocese myself. It's a, it's a good move, good things about Chelsea Diocese, but good things about this diocese too. Uh, and we hope and we pray very much that very soon you will be uh, very much at home among us here. This is a good place to be welcome. So now, John, on behalf of the patrons, I ask you to uh, present Simon. Bishop Robert, on behalf of Simeon's trustees, I present to you Simon Alexander Perron to be instituted as parish priest of Christchurch Cheltenham. I thank you for your presentation. I welcome Simon and will gladly institute him. Normally at this point in the service we would have a, a, a further little bit from somebody who would have travelled all the way from you, from, uh, from Chelmsford Dice to come and, and tell us what we were getting. <laughs> but you have carefully arranged it so that we don't get to know that. So. Um, We'll look forward to finding that out later. But now, quietly as we are, let us pray. God our Father, Lord of all the world, through your Son you have called us into the fellowship of your universal church. Hear our prayer for your faithful people, that in their vocation and ministry each may be an instrument of your love and give to your servant Simon the needful gifts of grace. Through our Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. reading from the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 17. Then Paul stood in front of the Areopagus and said, Athenians, I see how extremely religious you are in every way. For as I went through the city and looked carefully at the objects of your worship, I found among them an altar with the inscription, To an unknown God. What therefore you worship as unknown, this I proclaim to you. 
the God who made the world and everything in it, he who is Lord of heaven and earth, does not live in shrines made by human hands, nor is he served by human hands as though he needed anything, since he himself gives to all mortals life and breath and all things. From one ancestor he made all nations to inhabit the whole earth, and he allotted the times of their existence and the boundaries of the places where they would live, so that they would search for God and perhaps grope for him and find him, though indeed he is not far from each one of us. For in him we live and move and have our being, as even some of your own poets have said. For we too are his offspring. Since we are God's offspring, we ought not to think that the deity is like gold or silver or stone, an image formed by the art and imagination of mortals. While God has overlooked the times of human ignorance, now he commands all people everywhere to repent, because he has fixed a day on which he will have the world judged in righteousness by a man whom he has appointed, and of this he has given assurance to all by raising him from the dead. When they heard of the resurrection of the dead, some scoffed, but others said, We will hear you again about this. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. May I speak in the name of the living God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. This is a great document. It is the parish profile. The document that in this parish you prayed about, you reflected on, Perhaps you even argued about on some occasions as you sought to discern something about your life, your mission and your ministry and where it is that God is calling you. This is the document that Simon, I'm sure, called up on your computer and that you looked at and you reflected on as you thought whether it was right to explore if this was the place where God was calling you. And this is the document that as we met together, Bishop and Archdeacon and patrons and parish representatives, we use to reflect on the appointment process, our discernment of the right person to the call to this ministry, the discernment that came to us, say to you, Simon, would you come here? And I hope to you say, yes. This is a great document. And the tragedy would be if, and it does sometimes happen, after this process, you were simply to put this document in a drawer, to lock it away, forgotten, until in many years hence, it was dragged out again when another vacancy arrives. And you think, oh, well, did we do that? Your profile is good because it celebrates so much that is good about Christchurch in worship and in ministry the life that you share together, facing each other, and in mission, facing your community. It's great because it's not complacent. Celebrating who you are, you have asked some tough questions. It is clear you have said that we need to make significant changes 
to the way we use our time and resources. You've been honest. Our church life, you have said in this document, is not sustainable in its current form. It took courage to write that. Really took courage to write that. And I want to say thank you. Not many parishes, maybe even not enough parishes, have the courage that you have here. And because you've done this, because you've had the courage to be that honest, you have gone on to be able to say there is a tangible sense of eagerness and excitement about what God has in store for us. This is an immensely positive document. It's a creative document. It's honest and it's hopeful. It's Christian. And to do this, you thought a new vicar who could offer leadership, prayer, community building, to be outward, I hope you're listening, to be outward looking, inclusive, creative, responsive, and to engage with the possibility of a reordering project. Leadership, prayer, community building, outward looking, inclusive, creative, responsive, and engage with the possibility of a reordering project. And because that seemed a little tame, we've added a world pandemic just to go alongside it. <laughs> you have been brave in what you've written. Thank you. And Simon, thank you for being ready to hear that call with your family, to respond to the call of God and of the people here and of this diocese and to come into a new landscape as you leave the fair pastures of that beautiful county of Essex, I'm an Essex boy, for the reality of Cheltenham life. It's new territory for us all. New territory for you. It's new territory for the parish here, as you recognise those places with tangible eagerness and excitement that God is calling you. It was new territory for Paul in the reading that we've just heard at the Areopagus, right in the heart of Athens. Paul had not been here before, as we have not been here before. Athens, a great city, a town, a place of learning and philosophizing, a place full of people curious to know their knowledge and excitement. And a great university, as we have, and I don't know if they had any festivals, art, science, poetry, literature, but they would jolly well have enjoyed them if they did, exploring the latest ideas and thoughts. And Paul at the Areopagus is surrounded by some evidence of that curiosity, the gods of the age. But he sees also people who, in their curiosity, know that there is more to life, know that they haven't got it, they are not at ease. And so they have erected a shrine to an unknown god. Now Paul, I would imagine, in the Areopagus is not standing easy. So many competing truths around the place. And it would be quite easy to get angry, wouldn't it? They're all wrong. We need to tell them that they are wrong. We've got the truth. You are wrong. But he doesn't. Rather, Paul seeks to understand their context and to engage. What you worship as unknown, he says, this I proclaim to you. And Paul looks to connect them to the great story, the story of God who has made the world, made all the peoples, who has set everything in its place. And who, when we have gone astray, when we have messed up, sent even his own son to live and to die and to rise for us that we might have abundant life. 
Paul tells the story and he brings those that he meets, those who have erected this shrine who are searching to discover the one in which we live and move and have our being. He's quoting their own poetry at them. It's almost as if he's been at the festival. He makes connections for them. He knows what makes them tick. He knows how they're thinking and he seeks to join the gods. Well, Cheltenham is not quite first century Athens, but as I hope you will see, there are connections to be made. We live in a world where people are searching for understanding. We live in a world where we are surrounded by a myriad of gods with small g's. The gods are small things, material gods, physical gods, the gods we accumulate and cling onto. The God that would have us believe that through our own efforts, our own hard work, our own determination, we can save ourselves. And yet, perhaps particularly at this time, with all that we have been and all that we continue to live through, we are among the people who know that this is not enough. There must be more. We are among people longing to know the God of resurrection life. The God with a big G. Simon, as you come to this new ministry, to share in the task with the authors and owners of this profile, Paul offers a wonderful example of engagement. He meets people where they are, he makes connections, he doesn't tell them off, but he knows what the truth is. He's confident in the faith and he tells the Christian story. He's hospitable, he teaches the faith, he invites those who listen to engage and he has a tangible sense of eagerness and excitement about what God has in store. So please don't put this profile in the drawer. Use it as a tool to shape the journey that you embark on tonight. Use it in your PCC and in planning. Go back to it. Check yourself against it, not as a stick to beat yourself with, but as a guide to the intentions with which you have set out on this journey, to which you have committed yourself, priest and people, together. Simon, may God bless you as you begin this ministry in rather strange circumstances. But actually, it's not a bad place in which to begin, as together with the whole of the rest of the church, we seek to see how we will emerge from this time. God bless you in this ministry, as you engage with those asking the deep questions of life. Those looking for your preaching, your pastoral care, to share in the sacraments, but together you may come to that vision, that vision of the kingdom and know the life that is to be found in God, creator of heaven and earth, who gives us Jesus Christ to triumph over death and bring life for all. Amen. Simon, do you believe that God has called you to share the ministry of the people of God in this community 
as their priest and pastor. I do so believe. Will you lead Christ's people in this place in proclaiming his glorious gospel so that the good news of salvation may be heard? By the help of God, I will. Will you share your ministry with readers, lay leaders in the parish and with all who follow the way of Christ in this community? By the help of God, I will. Will you be diligent in prayer, in teaching the Holy Scripture and in all studies that will deepen your faith and fit you to bear witness to the truth of the Gospel? By the help of God, I will. Will you then, in the strength of the Holy Spirit, continually stir up the gift of God that is in you to make Christ known among all whom you serve? By the help of God, I will. Simon, you are a priest of the Church of God and called to serve at this time in the ministry of the Church of England. The Church of England is part of the one holy Catholic and apostolic church, worshipping the one true God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. It professes the faith uniquely revealed in the Holy Scriptures and set forth in the Catholic creeds, which faith the Church is called upon to proclaim afresh in each generation. Led by the Holy Spirit, it has borne witness to Christian truth in its historic formularies, the 39 Articles of Religion, the Book of Common Prayer, and the ordering of bishops, priests, and deacons. In the declaration you are about to make, will you affirm your loyalty to this inheritance of faith as your inspiration and guidance under God in bringing the grace and truth of Christ to this generation? and making him known to those in your care. I, Simon Alexander Herod, do so affirm, and accordingly declare my belief in the faith, which is revealed in the Holy Scriptures, and set forth in the Catholic creeds, and to which the historic formularies of the Church of England bear witness. And in public prayer and administration of the sacraments, I will use only the forms of service which are authorised or allowed by canon. I, Simon Alexander Herod, do swear that I will be faithful and bear true allegiance to Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II, her heirs and successors according to law. So help me God. I, Simon Alexander Herod, do swear by Almighty God that I will pay true and canonical obedience to the Bishop of Gloucester and her successors in all things lawful and wise. So help me God. Robert, by divine permission, Bishop of Tewkesbury, under the authority of the Right Reverend Rachel, by divine permission, Bishop of Gloucester, to my beloved in Christ, Simon Helen Clark in Holy Orders, greeting. I do hereby institute you to serve as Vicar of the Benefice of Cheltenham Christ Church, within the diocese and jurisdiction of the said Bishop, to which you are presented by Simeon's Trustees, patron of the said Benefice and I invest you with all the rights and duties of the said benefice, and commit to you the cure souls of the parishioners thereof, saving to the Bishop of Gloucester and her successors their episcopal rights. In testimony whereof I have hereunto set my hand and caused the episcopal seal of the Bishop of Gloucester to be affixed this 23rd day of July in the year of the Lord 2020. Simon, receive this cure of souls, which is both yours and mine, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Receive it confidently, serve Christ joyfully, 
put your trust in God, God is faithful. My brothers and sisters, let us ask God to bless Simon, to give him joy in his home and family life and in his ministry, and to renew within him the gifts of the Spirit. Would you stand? Holy God, fill this your servant Simon with your grace. Make him alive to your spirit and ready to do your will. May he lead your people boldly, walk with them lovingly, share with them imaginatively, and send them forth joyfully to proclaim the good news of the kingdom of Jesus Christ, our great High Priest and Lord. Amen. Gracious God, giver of all good things, may your blessing rest upon Simon, Jill and their family in their home. Where there is much coming and going, may your peace be known. Your Christian service, may your joy be found. And at all times, may your love bring unity and strength through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Living God, draw us deeper into your love. Jesus, our Lord, send us to care and serve. Holy Spirit, make us heralds of good news. Stir us, strengthen us, teach and inspire us to live your love with generosity and joy, imagination and courage, for the sake of your world and in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up the light of his countenance upon you and give you peace. Simon, may the Lord bless you. Amen. Amen. Archdeacon Phil, I have instituted Simon to the cure of souls in this parish. I now charge you to induct him. Thank you, Bishop. I will do so gladly and without any more delay. Simon, I induct you into the real, actual and corporeal possession of the parish of Christ Church Cheltenham, with all the rights, responsibilities, privileges and opportunities of service belonging to it. Simon, I place you in the stall assigned to the priest of this parish. May the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ fill you with all joy and peace, that you may abound in hope through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. So let's pray. In the power of the Spirit and in union with Christ, let us pray to the Father. Gracious God, you promise to hear us when we pray in faith. Strengthen Rachel and Roberts, our bishops, and all your church in the service of Christ. That those who confess your name may be united in your truth, live together in your love, and reveal your glory in the world. 
We pray for your church here in Cheltenham. For the work of sharing your gospel in this town. We give thanks to all who have served you so faithfully throughout the generations. And pray that our work here will honour their lives and see your kingdom come. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Bless and guide Elizabeth, our Queen. Give wisdom to all in authority. And direct this and every nation in the ways of justice and of peace. That we may honour one another and seek the common good. We pray for our governments at national and local level and for all who lead. May they always have an attitude of service and compassion. And even though they may not know it, be guided and led by you in the decisions they make. Lord, hear us. Lord, Lord graciously hear us. Give grace to us, our families and our friends, and to all our neighbors, <coughs> that we may serve Christ in one another and love as he loves us. We pray for Christ's church, for those who live in this parish, those who are educated in the schools in this place, and for those whose work brings them in. Give each of us the words to say and the actions to take to show Christ to each and every one. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Comfort and heal those who suffer in body, mind and spirit. Give them courage and hope in their troubles and bring them the joy of your salvation. At this time of a national and international health crisis, we pray for all affected by this virus. We pray for those working in our National Health Service, for doctors, for nurses, for healthcare assistants. Give them your wisdom and insight, we pray. For those who have been sick or ill and are now recovered, we give you thanks. For those still recovered, give them your strength and your healing touch, we pray. And for those who mourn the loss of those they love, friends and family, may they know your peace and your presence. Hear us as we remember those who have died in the faith of Christ. According to your promises, grant us with them a share in your eternal kingdom. Rejoicing in the fellowship of all the saints. We commend ourselves and the whole creation to your unfailing. Jesus taught us to call God our Father, and so in faith and trust we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, power, and glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. So may I invite you to stand as we welcome Simon, Jill and their family. And we say together the words at the top of page 11. Simon, in, in the, the fellowship, fellowship of Christ, we, we welcome you as a servant, friend, and leader of the people of God. May the Lord richly bless you and make you a blessing among us.
Thank you. I'm doing some thanks now. Does anyone get to sit down or do they have to oh, watch the thing? Stand up. If not done enough standing up and sitching down in this uh, yeah. sort of a bit more. This is the moment that I haven't written anything down, which means that Jill will now look absolutely horrified that I'll start making stuff up on the spot. Um, it's always important to say thank you, and there's so many people that they could thank. Uh, um, I'm ready for my close up. Am I in shock? So, thank you to those operating the machinery. Um, so many people I could thank, but I particularly want to thank uh, um, those up here to. Uh, this is Eric Dean, Archdeacon Phil, and Bishop Robert, thank you for all you've done. And for the team at Christchurch, that is who I think I need to thank most. For all those who've done so much to lead worship and to hold everything together in what has been a, a, a longer intermittent than you're expecting. And the particular thanks goes to all those who clearly have no idea how quickly it goes to my waistline for your deliveries of cake, crisps, an extraordinary uh, amount of stuff. I imagine I've had more calories in the last week than I have done in the last year. But a special thanks has to go uh, to, the to the church wardens. Church wardens, um, thank you so much. It's uh, a job that often goes uh, unnoticed and often without thanks, and often there's that moment of relief every April when you can say I can lay down uh, uh, my role. However, and so many other things that's been smacked into touch by this virus and you found yourself still going uh, uh, to October at the earliest, I suspect, but we shall see. Um, but that, that's it really, that, just thank you so much for all you've done. Can you stay there, I think? Oh no, oh, no, no you're there, that's right. Simon is now duly installed as your parish priest. He has promised to serve you in this ministry faithfully, yet the work of the kingdom in this place is not his alone, but belongs to the whole church. Priests and people together, you are the body of Christ in this place. Through you, God continues his work in the world today. Make full use of the gifts which the Holy Spirit bestows on you. Be instruments of the gifts of the Holy that the gifts of the Holy Spirit bestows on you. Be instruments of Christ's peace and love. Support one another in your lives and homes. Strive for justice. Do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, for without him you can do nothing. So I ask you now, priests and people together, do you dedicate yourselves afresh to God in the service of the gospel? Simon, be among us as one who rejoices to bring new Christians to baptism and to share with them the living water, Jesus Christ Himself. Will you share with me in encouraging people from around our communities? to discover and come to Christ, to help them to grow in Christ's life and to seek to shine with Christ's light beside them. By God's grace, Simon, be among us as one who is committed to reconciliation, showing God's forgiveness and Jesus. Will you share with me in striving to be instruments of God's peace in the church and in the world? so that we may be a Christ-like community of love. By God's grace, we know. Simon, be among us as one who studies the scriptures, preaching God's love in the Word made flesh, to deepen our faith and broaden our understanding, and to make Christ known to all in our community. Will you join with me in learning and living out the world, that all may hear and rejoice in the good news of Christ our Saviour and Redeemer? By God's grace, we will. Simon, be among us as one who holds us in prayer, as one who leads us in worship, in psalm and silence, in canticle and praise, that we may grow in God's image and likeness. Care for the needs of the world. 
Will you join me in placing prayer at the hearts of this community? At the rising of the sun and its setting, that all people may come to be blessed by the light of Christ. Simon, be among us to break the bread and to bless the cup, designed to celebrate with us the Lord's death and resurrection, that we may know his presence in us and our hope in him, and be nourished to live out our Christian mission in our daily lives. Will you join me in offering ourselves in honesty and utter trust to be a living sacrifice, rejoicing to know that we are the body of Christ, sustained and nurtured by his body and blood? By God's grace, O Lord, our God, in Christ, you have raised us to life and called us to share in his purpose and his fullness. To you and to your service, we devote ourselves all that we have and all that we are. Enlighten us by your Holy Spirit, strengthen us by your grace, nourish us in word and sacrament. In your mercy, build us up for your use and use us for your glory and grant that we, together, may play our parts in making Christ known in this world, living his life here in the hope of a glory to come, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, world without end. Amen. Amen. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who has made heaven and earth. Blessed be the name of the Lord, now and forever. Amen. God keep you in the fellowship of the saints. Christ protect you by the ministry of the angels. The Spirit make you holy in God's service. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Excellent. Over here, Simon. I made that at least ten years, I think. The Cure of Souls is a ministry alongside all those who live or work in this community. This church must be open to God's world and to all who seek Him. Simon, you are called to help the people who are refreshed here by their worship and fellowship to live out their faith in this community so that God's love may be made known. Together, by God's grace, we will be Christ's people at work in the world. The Lord preserve your going out and your coming in from this time forward and forevermore. Go in the power of Christ. We have a gospel to proclaim. Go in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God.